Chinta here with SS Multimedia, and today we're going to be learning how to understand fractions and regions. The objective is to understand how to use fractions to define a model. So let's get started. If you don't know what a fraction is, that's completely okay. I'll be explaining what it is. Fractions are used to name part of a whole. Each part must be completely equal. For example, two-fourths. So I'm going to have a square right here. And I have four friends that each want a piece. So I have to split it into fourths so that we can each have one. You can also split it into fifths, sixths, sevenths, as many parts as you want. So if I want two fourths, then that would be two, see, two parts of that four. That's what you can use a fraction for. Each fourth must be the same size. So if I have a rectangle here and I split it into like that, 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 no, that's, that's not equal size, so you can't take a fraction of it. So next up, we have the numerator. The numerator is the number above the line. It represents the number of parts whole. And then we have the denominator. The denominator is the total number of parts in the whole. So if you're a bit confused with this and this, because it both says parts of whole, don't worry, I'll be explaining it further. So we have 1 sixth right here, okay? One is the numerator and six is the denominator. But how do we get that? Well, if I have a pie right here and I take one slice, that would be the number of slices I took and I shaded that to show that I took it. So that would be my numerator. If I took two slices, I could shade another slice and say that I took two slices instead and it would be two six. But where do we get the six from? Well, the six is the total number of parts since the numerator is supposed to be the total number not the, not just the number of parts. So it would be six because one, two, three, four, five, six. The pie is split into six pieces. So that's how you get the numerator and denominator. Finally, we have different types of fractions. The specific type we'll be working with today are called unit fractions. Unit fractions are when the numerator is equal to one, like one third. This one is also a unit fraction because the numerator is equal to 1. The denominator can be anything. So here are some examples. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding the unit fraction and the shaded fraction. To find the unit fraction, we always know that the numerator is 1. So we would have to find the, the denominator now. Well, how do we do that? Well, we need to count the number of parts in this diagram right here. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means that there's four parts, and these four make up one whole. So that means that the de denominator has to be four. But now we need to figure out what the shaded fraction is. Shaded fraction is what's shaded. Like you can see right here, two and three are shaded. So that means that there's one, two shaded parts. So it would be two. And then we would have to figure out the denominator, but we've already found that from the previous one by counting the number of parts, so it would be two over four. Here's our next example. We have a circle here with three parts. So we need to figure out the unit fraction. Well, numerator is going to be one again, and we know that there's one, two, three. So that it would be one over three because there's three parts and the unit is one. But now we need to figure out the shaded fraction. The shaded fraction would be one, two. So we know that there's two parts, so the numerator would be two. And since the denominator is 3 from the last one, we can use it again to get 2 thirds as our shaded fraction. Now it's problem time. We have a triangle right here. And we need to figure out the shaded fraction and the unit fraction. So what we have to do is we have to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we know that there's a total of 6 parts. And since we know that for a unit fraction, the numerator always has to be 1. We know that we can do 1 over 6 for the unit fraction. But now we need to figure out the shaded fraction. To figure that out, we have to count the number of shaded parts and put it over the number of total parts. So since the nu number of shaded parts is 1, 2, 3, the numerator would be 3. And since the number of total parts is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we can do 3 over 6 to get our shaded fraction. Our next problem is a rectangle. So for the rectangle, 
we need to figure out the unit fraction again and the shaded fraction. How do we do that? Well, we have first let's count the number of parts there are. One, two, three, four. So that means our unit fraction would have to be one because, again, unit fractions always have a denominator of one. If you're wondering why it's called a unit fraction, units, a unit is equal to one. So we have one over one, two, three, four. But now we need to figure out the shaded fraction. The shaded fraction would have to be the number of shaded parts. So we would have to do one, two, three. We know that there's three shaded parts. But then what about the number of total parts? Well, we already counted and we got one, two, three, four. So we know that the number of total parts is four. So the shaded fraction would be three fourths. Here's the next problem right here. We have to figure out the number of shaded parts and then also the unit fraction. So let's do the unit fraction first. So the numerator is one, but now we need to count these and we have to figure out what the number of total parts there is. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the number of total parts is eight. Keep in mind that a diagram could have any number of parts, 100, 200, it really doesn't matter, but you usually don't see super big ones because it's hard to count. So now we have to figure out the shaded fraction. A shaded fraction is the number of shaded parts. And since we've already labeled them here, we can just go ahead and count them. Go one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know that there's gonna be six total shaded parts. And we counted the denominator already, so we can count these other two. And go seven, eight, so we know that the denominator is eight. So our fraction would be six eighths. Here we have another example. So let's figure this one out. So we need to figure out the unit fraction. So the numerator is one. And then we also have to figure out the number of parts there are. One, two, three, four. So we know that our unit fraction is one fourth. So let's do the shaded fraction now. So let's count the number of shaded parts. One, two, three, four. So we have four as our numerator. The, the denominator would be one, two, three, four. That's kind of an odd fraction, four over four. Isn't that equal to one? Well, yes, it is. We can prove this by doing four divided by four, which is equal to one. So four over four is equal to one. It's one whole. Here's our next problem. We have a circle with, I don't know how many parts, we're gonna have to count those. So let's do our unit fraction. One over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we know there's a total of eight parts. So our unit fraction would be one eighth. But now what's our shaded fraction? Well, there's three parts that are shaded. So we can do one, two, three to check. We know the numerator would be three, but now we need to figure out the denominator. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we know that our denominator is eight. So the fraction would be three eighths. Let's do this one. So here we have a, so here we have what I think is a, parallelogram. So let's count how many parts there are to find the unit fraction. So we have one, two, three, four. There's only four parts, so we could do one fourth to show our unit fraction. So now for the shaded fraction. We know that there's one, two shaded parts, and three, four, one, two, three, four makes four, so our shaded fraction would be two fourths. So here we're going to be drawing a shape. The shape has to have one of two parts shaded in. So I'm going to draw a circle. Here's our circle. And now I'm going to shade in one of these parts. But how do I shade it in without splitting it? Well, so I'm just going to draw a line. That's not even, but we're going to pretend it is. So we have two parts right here. One, two. So I'm just going to shade this in. And then we have one of two parts shaded. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something.